Hello, Professor Simmons here. We're going to talk about orthogonality of Legendre functions in this video. Now in class, we derived the Legendre functions and we talked about some of their properties. We mentioned that a Legendre function PL of X is a polynomial in X of degree L. We also said in class that if you have two different Legendre functions, PL and PM, where L and M are different numbers, are different values, then if you multiply the two Legendre functions together and you integrate the product over X on its full range from negative one to one, the result is zero. And we said that this is the sense in which two different Legendre functions PL and PM are orthogonal to one another. I'd like to show you how to prove that this orthogonality is actually the case. To do that, we start from Legendre's differential equation, but we rewrite it in a slightly unfamiliar form. The term that does not involve derivatives of the Legendre function, we just write down as usual, L times L plus one, multiplying PL of X. The right-hand side is zero, but the earlier terms that involve derivatives of the Legendre function, we combine in this way, writing them as the derivative with respect to X of the function one minus X squared multiplying one derivative of a Legendre function. Now that's just Legendre's differential equation for PL of X, we will take that equation and multiply it by one factor of p sub m everywhere in the equation. The second, so that's step A. Step B, we take the equation we've constructed and we reverse the roles of L and M. So we now have one equation where most things depend on L and there's an overall factor of p m and there's a second nearly identical equation where most terms involve m, and there's just one overall factor of pl multiplying everything. What we will do is subtract those two equations from one another. Since the right-hand side of each of our equations was zero, the right-hand side of the difference between the equations is zero. The terms that involve no derivatives of the Legendre functions just look like a bunch of constants multiplying PL, PM, and those constants are the L times L plus one from the first equation minus M times M plus one from the second equation. So that's straightforward. And then we have the derivative terms. One is this uh, term we discussed up here, but now multiplied by P sub M. And then there's an analogous term involving P sub M multiplied by an overall p sub l, and we are subtracting one from the other. So we now have a new equation with a non-zero, uh, excuse me, a bunch of uh, individually non-zero terms on the left-hand side, but when you combine them all, they give zero as the total answer. Now, the next thing we want to do with this equation is it would be more convenient if we could pull this p inside of the bracket with the derivative, and if we could do the same in this term. Now if we pull this one inside, suddenly our left-hand side will then be inaccurate by a term like this. But if we simultaneously pull the piece of L in this bracket, there will be a corresponding term like this, but with an opposite sign, and they will cancel one another. So our equation now looks like what we have down here, forget about the integral for the moment. Without the integral, what we're saying is that the derivative of one minus x squared pm pl prime plus p uh, minus pl pm prime plus the same combination of information from above, all of that combined adds up to zero. We've just neatly pulled everything in the first part in under the derivative. Now, let's integrate this whole equation 
in x over the full range of values of x from negative 1 to 1. And let's look at what happens to each term. Well, the first term in the integral is a total derivative. So it integrates to be just the stuff we were taking the derivative of, and we evaluate it at the endpoints of the integral. But the 1 minus x squared will vanish at x equals 1 or x equals minus 1. So this whole first term vanishes. The second term here, well, we can pull the constants outside the integral. And so we have a bunch of constants multiplying the integral of pl pm dx. And remember, the right-hand side, as always, is still 0. This was 0. That's great. But this set of constants can't kill each other off because L and M are not the same. That's the whole point of what we're looking at. This set of constants is not 0, but this set of constants times this integral must vanish. Hence, the integral must vanish. But this integral is precisely what we said was the orthogonality integral for two different Legendre functions. And that is how we know that two different Legendre functions are orthogonal to one another in this sense. And that turns out to be essential for defining a Legendre series and using a Legendre series expansion to do lots of interesting physics problems.